Antarctica is melting fast. A NASA study that used cutting-edge technique to look through satellite data has provided the sharpest focus yet on how fast the Antarctic ice sheets are melting. Researchers found that in 2015, Antarctica lost roughly 1,929 gigatons of ice, 89% of which was from the western part of the continent. The study confirms that the West Antarctic ice sheets are melting more rapidly than those in the east, with glacier flows increasing in response to warming oceans. The area has also experienced major iceberg calving incidents in recent years, which renders the larger region of ice left behind more prone to melting. If the entire western Antarctic ice sheet were to melt, previous studies estimate it could cause a 3-meter rise in global sea levels. Scientists say loss of the ice sheet may be inevitable, unless the world can manage to decarbonize in the near future and keep emissions low. Are you hot? You will be. Thought climate change predictions were scary. Well, they just got a whole lot scarier. The possible effects of climate change are far worse and could come far sooner than we previously thought. So says James Hansen, a leading climate change researcher who was among the first to warn the public about the serious effects of a buildup of carbon dioxide. The former director of NASA's Institute for Space Studies, along with 18 other leading climate scientists, published a paper this week predicting rapid sea level rises could happen within decades. A team of researchers' primary claim that as the ice sheets in Greenland and Antarctica melt, a layer of cold fresh water will build up over the ocean, trapping warmer, salty ocean water with which it doesn't easily mix underneath the surface and thereby leading to a feedback loop that causes ice shelves to melt even more rapidly, effectively slowing down and possibly shutting down ocean circulation, an idea apparently not too dissimilar from the premise of the 2004 disaster movie The Day After Tomorrow. The scientists believe that this ice melting will cool polar regions of the globe and warm areas around the equator, causing stark temperature variances it could make superstorms, such as Hurricane Sandy, which struck the U.S. East Coast with devastating effect in 2012, far more frequent. To argue their case, the researchers controversially claim that storms during the warm Eemian period 120,000 years ago were powerful enough to lift massive boulders, 1,000 tons in size, from the bottom of the ocean and hurl them ashore. Hansen and his team believe a multimeter sea level rise could occur before the end of the century and envelop all of the planet's coastal cities. Despite the dire predictions, Hansen, in an accompanying video, explained that there may possibly still be an opportunity to reverse this worrying trend, saying, quote, I doubt that we have passed the point of no return, but frankly, we're not certain of that. Global warming is killing our oceans. A new study predicts that within 15 to 20 years, human-caused deoxygenation will be felt across the world's oceans. With climate change warming sea waters, oxygen levels in the world's oceans are beginning to drop. Surface water with higher temperatures absorb less oxygen. Such surface water is also more buoyant, so oxygen is less likely to make it into deeper water. The resulting conditions are dangerous to marine ecosystems, which depend on oxygen for survival. With the threat already underway, changes in the southern Indian Ocean and parts of the Pacific and Atlantic will be felt as early as 2030. Oceans in eastern Africa, Australia and Southeast Asia, however, won't feel the impact until the next century. Worsening the effects of deoxygenation is an increase in carbon dioxide, causing oceans to be more acidic and less habitable. Researchers say carbon emissions must be reduced if we want to slow the oxygen loss, but monitoring and understanding where the oxygen levels are dipping and how it's impacting our waters is also key. Bears becoming vegetarian because of global warming. Are you hot? Looks like global warming is getting so unbearable that grizzly bears in Alaska are now going vegetarian. According to a new study, grizzly bears on Kodiak Island changed their diets due to climate change and started eating berries instead of salmon. Normally, researchers would see grizzlies eating large amounts of sockeye salmon from streams in preparation for the winter. In the summers of 2014 and 2015, the bears were no longer seen hunted for salmon. The bears were found in the hills eating elderberries. Warmer temperatures were causing the berries to ripen earlier. This meant that salmon and berries were available at the same time. Elderberries contain less protein compared to salmon and require less energy to digest, leading to faster weight gain for bears. 
The change in diet was also found to be affecting the bear's natural habitat, because fewer fish carcasses in the forests meant less nutrients being absorbed into the soil. Climate change has already caused islands to vanish. A new study led by University of Queensland researchers say that changes in global climate and the subsequent sea level rise has already led to the loss of multiple Pacific islands. A team of Australian scientists say that Isabel, one of the main islands of the Solomon Archipelago, has already lost five of its reef islands. Another six islands on Isabel have declined in area by more than 20% between 1947 and 2014. Meanwhile, residents of the island of Nuatambu have been forced to relocate to the nearby main island of Choiseul because of flooding. Of the dozens of homes that once stood on Nuatambu, at least 11 have already been swept away by the rising waters. While the global average rate of sea level rise has been 3.2 millimeters per year since 1993, the Solomon Islands have experienced an average rise by about 7 to 10 millimeters per year since 1994. The research team, who published their study in the journal Environmental Research Letters on Friday, discovered that the sea level rise has destroyed villages that have existed since the 1930s and has displaced numerous communities. Increasingly violent typhoons to hit China and Southeast Asia. New research shows typhoons in East and Southeast Asia are becoming stronger and looks set to continue to intensify. Ocean waters in East and Southeast Asia have become significantly warmer. As typhoons pass over warm water, they absorb some of the thermal energy and become stronger. Research reveals that typhoons in the region have become up to 15% more powerful over the past four decades. Typhoon Lion Rock swept across northern Japan on the night of September 6th. It has already killed 17 people and the country is bracing itself for another typhoon.